Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Mass. <coughs> Today's Gospel ends with a daunting question. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? We are reminded of the importance of keeping close to God through prayer. There are many ways to pray and many forms of prayer that lead us to greater intimacy with God. Living in our fast-paced fast -paced society, we should try to sit down every day for prayer, meals together, and to share our life experiences. Our gathering song is number 302, Gather Us In, Please Stand. <clears throat>
And let us pray that we might become the person God calls us to be. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our <coughs> Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Amalek came and waged war against Israel. Moses, therefore, said to Joshua, pick out certain men and tomorrow go out and engage Amalek in battle. I will be standing on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him. He engaged Amalek in battle after Moses had climbed to the top of the hill with Aaron and Hut. As long as Moses kept his hands raised up, Israel had the better of the fight. But when he let his hands rest, Amalek had the better of the fight. Moses' hands, however, grew tired. So they put a rock in place for him to set on. Meanwhile, Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady until sunset. As Joshua mowed down Amalek and his people with the, ed of, with the edge of the sword. The word of the Lord. from all evil. 
He will guard your life. The Lord will guard your coming and your going, both now and forever. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, Remain faithful to what you have learned and believed, because you know from whom you learned it, and that from infancy you have known the sacred scriptures, which are capable of giving you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness so that one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power, proclaim the word. Be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. The word of the Lord. you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke Glory to you, Lord. jesus told his disciples a parable about the necessity for them to pray always without becoming weary he said there was a judge in a certain town who neither feared god nor respected any human being and a widow in that town used to come to him and say Render a just decision for me against my adversary. For a long time the judge was unwilling, but eventually he thought, Well, it is true that I neither fear God nor respect any human being. Because this widow keeps bothering me, I shall deliver a just decision for her, lest she finally come and strike me. The Lord said, Pay attention to what the dishonest judge says. Will not God then secure the rights of his chosen ones who call out to him day and night? Will he be slow to answer them? I tell you, he will see to it that justice is done for them speedily. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Time goes fast. 
been here about 11, 12 years, and uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm sure that most of you probably don't realize that Father, I think maybe some of you do know, Father reads a lot. He always has read a lot, and he's always told me that, and uh, that was his, his joy was always to read a lot of books. And he tried to get that to rub off on me. And uh, I'd say about over the last few years that about every eight weeks, probably about every two months, just on the average, I would say, he, uh, he slips a book into my hands or leaves it on the sacristy desk or throws one in the bulletin box and tells the gals, give this to Joe. And, um, and so as a result, in my office, where my ledge is, I have a stack of books about this high all the way across and uh, I have kind of shuffled and reshuffled them, put some away and tried to manage them the best I can. But um, I got to thinking last week, you know, it's getting to be kind of a menace because they're almost in the way, but I, and there's no way that I could, I could read all these books. And so I sat down, I really sat down and kind of analyzed myself and asked myself, now what's the reason I'm not reading these books? And, um, and, I, and I, put, I just kind of put together a little list of what was keeping me from these books, and they're all excuses, you know. Uh, I, I, w I was resisting this, and so when I looked at it, I, I said to myself, okay, I'm not reading these books because if I pick up one of all these books and I'll figure out later on that I wish I wouldn't have read it, there's probably more on the shelf that's a lot more exciting than this one or would have done me more good. The second thing I realized was that um, I, I'm kind of seasonal in my choices. You know, it's nice outside, summertime, everything's going on. You don't really feel like reading, so the idea is, is when it gets to be 20 below zero and, and the snow flies, then that's when I'm going to really get into these books. Well, that doesn't happen. Um, then I thought, well, most of the time, you know, overall, office pretty busy, people coming in and out. Can't read these books because I'm I'm concentrating on something else. It's not going to work. And then the last one I came up with was, I don't feel good. I don't know, I have a headache. It doesn't feel right for me to just read these books today. And so uh, I got uh, curious one day uh, to this one book, and it's uh, pretty colorful. It's kind of attracting. The name, name of the book is uh, Resisting Happiness. It's got a little smiley face on there. But uh, if you ever get a chance, it's by Matthew Kelly suggest that you read it, which I haven't, I'm not real good at. But anyway, uh, if, you, if you would take interest in this, I think it's, it's fairly easy, you would enjoy it. But the, I, the idea was, was uh, I asked myself, well, what happiness am I resisting? You know, what's going on in this book? And it got me curious. It got me curious enough to pick it up and start reading it. And I'm almost done with it, not quite. But on the other hand, um, this is the way that, that life goes, and I don't know if we realize it or not, but this is what the author says, this uh, Matthew Kelly is excellent. He says, the hardest war in life to win is the ones we don't realize we are fighting. Now, if you think about that, that's so true. The hardest war in life to win is the ones we don't realize what we are fighting. And the bottom line is, in this book, what we are fighting is our, our resistance. So what is this resistance? Resistance is a sluggish feeling of not wanting to do something that you know is good for you. And I think that knowing who we are, each and every one of us have that kind of a, a fight in our life. And we have this resistance of a sluggish feeling of not knowing, not wanting to do something you know is good for you. And so the idea is, is that we're all fighting this war of resistance. We're keeping God out of our lives, you might say. And so I asked the question just this last week, just thinking about some of this. You know, how many good books are really never finished because of resistance? Somebody decided to write something, put it away, and it, and it could have been maybe a number one bestseller. How many pieces of music are written and dropped that have potentially have had a chance to make it to the top of the charts and been number one? How many diseases, quite possibly, could have been cured by someone who wants to nail a specific disease and rid it, get it, get it rid from the human race so it doesn't bother people, doesn't make people sick? How many have resisted that call to do that specific thing in life and rejected it because 
of resistance, something else came along and distracted them and something that was easier to do than maybe what they were focused on doing. And I think last but not, not least, it's uh, also applied to businesses or I think uh, maybe one of the, the best things I could think of for today was vocations. You know, how many times we have young men and young women who are actually, and I've heard this before in, in public, say, oh, I don't think the seminary is meant for that guy. I don't think the convent's meant for that gal. I don't really think they're seminary material. And you know, young people have heard those messages from within the families and have said, hey, you know, I think they're right. I really think they're right. I'm probably not priest material. I'm not sister material. I'm not meant for that kind of vocation. I'll just try something else and I'll just go on life and I'll, I'll find another profession or something. And I, and I really think that this is the way that things kind of happen in our, in our lives and the way that resist. And sometimes people help us accomplish, accomplish our resistance in life, believe it or not. Uh, sometimes uh, there, there are other people that affect us in the way that we make decisions in our life. And I would say this, just in, as an example, if you woke up this morning and hit the snooze button and rolled over rather than get, get out of bed, you lost the first battle of the day in regards to resistance. And how many times has that happened to you? You know, you know you should get up, you know you should be doing all these things, but you don't because you resisted it. And a lot of times it's our, our human nature to do that. You know, if, if you look at that last line of the gospel, I think it's the nuts and bolts, the meat, meat and potatoes of everything that's in the message today, and it's all the readings are connected to, they're very good. But Jesus asked a question in the last line of the gospel today, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? And when you look out and see, and you turn the TV on in the morning, you listen to the radio, and you see what's going on in the world, and you, you, you go out and you do your business every day, you have to kind of ask that question, is, is there faith? But we know that people are losing faith, they're leaving churches, and the reason is, is they lost the war and resistance because they've given up. And St. Paul uses the word today, persistence. People have lost their persistence. And you know what? It's, it's a lot of times inconvenient to be a Christian. It's not always real convenient. St. Paul says, whether it's convenient or inconvenient, do it. And you know, it's a, a lot of things in our world, uh, in our personal lives, are, it's, you know, it's all a matter of discipline, whether we can make ourselves do something or not. That's, you know, it's a, successes in, in sports and music and education and business and all the things that we think about is all due to our confidence that, that we can do it in a discipline. And uh, I think a good example of that, and I was talking about this at St. Michael's this morning, uh, three o'clock in the morning in Chelsea, my newspaper comes. I don't know where it comes from, but, but at three o'clock in the morning, I know it hits the deck on my porch. I know it's there, and about six o'clock, I usually get up and I'll go out to the porch and grab it, but then on the other hand, I grab my prayer book. So I have the newspaper in one hand and my prayer book in the other, other hand. Now which one do you think you'd like to rather sit down and read in the morning? Would it be the comics and what's going on in the battle of politics or you know all, all these things are happening or you know what's going on in sports? People are big on the sports page. But I really believe that most of you would probably say, I'd rather sit down and read the newspaper in the morning. I'd rather find out what's going on. These prayers get kind of stale sometimes, right? Same psalm readings. Same readings from the Bible, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, this is how it kind of goes. And so the world lures us and we resist, you know, God's word. We resist God's ways and we fall to the secular world and what's going on out there. And it's easier not to go to church than it is to go to church. We all know that, right? Because we have to make some sacrifices. And, and I think this is, you know, all uh, innately built in who we are as human beings. It's easier to go the ways of the world, do the easy things than it is to, to have some kind of structure in our life than what we're maybe even used to. You know, uh, when I first came to St. Michael's about 11, 12 years ago now, I would go up in the middle of the afternoon up into church and, and I would just take a look around and ordinarily I would say, I, I would see maybe, you know, from 10 o'clock in the morning till maybe three in the afternoon, I would see about, you know, four, five, six people there every day, just visiting, uh, praying, rosary, looking at the, doing the stations, whatever the case might be. 
And, and I was just thinking for the last couple of years, I don't see it anymore. I don't see the people there. Um, I, can, I can go upstairs quite a few times a day and I'm generally up there about two or three o'clock. I try and pray for all the people that ask me to pray for them, you know, that kind of thing. But I don't see people there anymore. And it's kind of sad and when I look back and 10 years ago, Lenten devotions, St. Michael's, I might have had 35, 40 people there, you know, on a weekday night. Um, now I'm, we're probably one-fourth to one-third that. And so you know that there's been a rejection, a resistance of, of uh, you know, what's going on in our lives and in the world. And it's really kind of sad. Uh, when I was reading this about Matthew Kelly, he was, uh, he was saying that when he started out in his career, he, he made talks all over the world. And he said, I, I, started, I started making my talks when I was about 20-some years old. I don't know how old he is today, but anyway, uh, he's made a career of, of what he does. But he goes all over the world. And one of the things he said was, when I go to churches all over the world, what I used to do was go to a church right away, and I would at least find time to pray for 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes, he said, was all I would do. To ask that what I'm doing is God's will, and that God's will be done through him and his work. But he said, that's the first thing I would always do. He said, I can do that same thing today, and now all the churches are locked. Well, you know, that's common sense. You know, we wouldn't want somebody to come in and destroy our churches because of the things that are going on in the world today. I mean, churches have to be locked. But I think it, it, uh, it kind of sets a, a pattern or precedence of what we need to do in our lives. And he said, you know, if, if we don't take some time in, in our private, individual lives and pray so that we have some direction in our life for where God's taken us and where he wants us to be and what his will is, then we've lost the whole day. We've lost it, you know. We, are, we have resisted uh, what God's will and his intention is in, in our life. So, uh, so anyway, there's a lot of reasons uh, we resist happiness. And when we resist God, we resist happiness. Whether that's due to, to worry, or maybe we're comparing ourselves to others, which we shouldn't do. Uh, maybe it's bad relationships. Maybe it's laziness, fear. And uh, get this, Matthew Kelly said, even debt, even debt can destroy our happiness um, in, our, in our lives. So, so anyway, I just want to follow it. Uh, three points that he mentioned and, and uh, made note of in his book uh, from the Catechism of the, of the Catholic Church in regards to our topic today. First of all, number one, he said, desire for God is written in our hearts. It cannot be erased. And I think that's true. God created each and every one of us innately good. We are all good human beings. It's what we do when we have choices to make that we kind of destroy ourselves in the event of our sins. So anyway, that, that's true. God is, is uh, the desire for God is written in our hearts and cannot be erased. Number two, we're created by God for God. Study the catechism and it will tell you the reason God created us was to know, love, and serve him. That's from the Baltimore Catechism. It's easy. And I, I think sometimes we need to rethink of what, what our purpose is in life, what God created us for. And God created us out of love and so he expects that love to return to him. And then last but not least, you will only find the truth and happiness you are looking for in God. And you know, the, the world would be a much happier place if that was taken seriously by each and every one of us, that you will find the truth and happiness you are looking for in God. And so many people are misled. Take a look at the world. So many people are misled when, it's, when it comes to sports or or business or money look at the real world and you'll you'll find out that in spite of it all as much as people have in wealth they're not truly happy people because they haven't had a relationship with God so anyway lots to think about today good readings good material um, and you know I think when you go away today maybe the the question you can ask yourself is the last line of the gospel when the Son of Man comes will he find faith on earth but will he find faith in us as well?
believe in God, the Father Almighty, greater in heaven and heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trust in God and his love and give our needs to <clears throat> For all who feel overburdened, that the gentle and humble heart of Christ may comfort them in their pain, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For all who have left the church, that our good example, prayers, and encouragement may help to bring them back, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For national, state, and local leaders, that they may be guided by our nation's conviction to remain one nation under God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the directors, teachers, and students of our religious education programs, that their study increase their faith and love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from fires and flooding, that they may receive the help they need to rebuild their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those experiencing pain due to surgery, medicine, or hospice care, that they may know the love of God, family, and friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, including Bill Moulton, that they rejoice to hear God call them into eternal life and glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I'd like to also remember uh, yesterday we, we gave Helen Fleur back to God who served the church here for over 20 years as a kind of receptionist secretary. Pray for her husband, Max, her son and daughter and family. And let's pray for all those who work in parishes who are the first face that people see, that they might be welcoming and try to be the face of our Lord to people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Grismer family will be bringing the uh, gifts to the altar this morning. Our song for the preparation of the gifts is number 599, Speak, Lord.
acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gift, that through the cleansing action of your grace, we may be made holy by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always, everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, and with all the end, we acclaim and sing. Celebrate 
the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. Looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you, you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom till the hour when we stand before you. Saints among the saints in the halls of heaven with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostle, apostles and all the saints and with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. 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 <laughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. With your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my, my roof, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be you. <clears throat> Our communion song is number 585, <clears throat> Many and Great.
Please join me as we read and meditate on the Year of Mercy Prayer. It is located on the back of your breaking bread. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us to be merciful like the Heavenly Father and have told us that whoever sees your face sees him. Your loving gaze has saved many. Show us your face so that we may also be saved. You are the visible face of the invisible Father, the God of forgiveness and mercy. Help us be your face the world through our love and compassion. Send your spirit so that the jubilee of mercy may be a year of grace both to us and through us. Open our hearts and fill us with enthusiasm as we share your message of mercy with the poor and oppressed around us. And ask us through the intercession of Mary, Mother of Mercy. Amen. Oh, lots of announcements here. Um, this is the match I used this morning to light our candle over yonder. I forgot to dispose of it. Okay, uh, the harvest of plenty table is out in the middle of the atrium. There's tomatoes, was it Asian pears, and something green. I'm not sure what that was. Peppers, yeah, peppers, okay. Date night tonight, Sunday, 5.30 p.m. here. <laughs> On Tuesday, they're having a, a, a study day for all staff in cluster parishes. So all of the staff, except me, uh, will be at that study day. So the parish office will be closed. So the, the office will not open here at all on Tuesday. And Joe will not be in his office in Belle Plaine. Uh, and I'm, uh, George, I'm not, I can't promise you the building will be open. But it's supposed to be 82 on Monday, so it can't be too bad on Tuesday. Uh, the building might not be open, folks. We'll figure that out tomorrow. This is on a personal recommendation. Uh, I'd strongly encourage you to get a flu shot. Uh, last year, you know, the, the virus mutates every year and they try to adapt it every year as best they can. But last year there was a kind of a bad strain and at least 85 children under age five or six died from that strain. And it was kind of bad because, you know, one day you're fine, next day you're sick. The third day was obviously you had the flu and then they took you to the hospital and you were gone. So folks, this is something uh, all doctors recommend this. I, I don't want to get into politics, but some people are concerned about things. Uh, now I haven't had the flu in 40 or 50 years, but uh, I get the flu shot. It's what they call herd immunity. <laughs> if, if more people get the flu shot, <clears throat> the odds are that you, you will not get the flu or if you do, it'll be much milder. And that's important because uh, if you get the flu, you're contagious. The flu is very contagious. And so you could pass it on to an older person, elderly person, whose immune system is not so strong, or a young child whose immune system is not so strong. So again, do what you want, of course, but I recommend, I've got my flu shot already for the year. And uh, I just think it's a wise thing to do. You're basically protecting other people besides yourself, okay? Uh, the reason I'm not going to the staff meeting is my, uh, or that meeting, is uh, my father is celebrating his 100th birthday on Wednesday. So I'm... So I'll be leaving here Tuesday morning, going to Dubuque, and I'll be there Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and I'll return Thursday, uh, God willing, to uh, say Mass in Chelsea, at 11.15 for the ACCW ladies, okay? So that being the case, my being gone, uh, there will be no Wednesday morning mass here at 8, no mass in Belle Plaine Thursday morning, but there will be mass in Chelsea at 11.15. And I'll be boarding my dogs, but if, if someone really likes dogs, you can talk to me after mass and we can talk about that. Okay, we still need people. I think we had a volunteer last week. We could still use one or two more. I would like to go to the nursing homes on Friday. 
And again, folks, it's not difficult duty. It's a really good thing. Uh, the person that volunteered last week, and I didn't get all the details, but they go there often to see their husband. So if you visit people there, it's, it's really simple. Uh, you can walk through it with someone. It's just a, a little prayer service, give out communion, cheer people up for the day, okay? You'd probably only have to do it about every six weeks or uh, more or less, depending on what you want to do. There is uh, a Knights of Columbus, a Knights roast beef dinner. And folks, this is really good because I'm around a lot and I kind of, I smell things. So the, uh, the roast beef will be really good. Fresh homemade rolls made this morning, really good. Mashed potatoes and gravy, green beans, dessert, coffee, both kinds, milk, and if you're really nice, you might give you a glass of water, okay? So it's donation only, a, a really nice, a really nice dinner to support the work that the Knights do, okay? Am I forgetting anything? Okay. Uh, can't think of anything else, so let's pray in Thanksgiving. I will mention one thing. I was reminded by this young lady. Uh, we had a server training meeting, and the servers asked me why they couldn't have a little cross to wear like they do in Chelsea and Belle Plain. So in my, uh, in my wanderings, looking through drawers, I found five or six server crosses. So pass the word to all servers. They're in about the third or fourth drawer top, and you can put it on and wear that when you serve mass, okay? Sure. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray, that benefiting from our participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. May God bless you and yours, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our parting song is number 543. Oh, bless the Lord. <laughs>